So good evening. Thanks for joining. So today the concept is how to set up the storefront server and how to configure it that we have seen already. If you are joined the additional server example, let me share my screen. You can see here. We have lab 125 setup is already. We created. There is a storefront one server is already created. And storefront two we need to configure. Now select the storefront one. Go to the console. New tab. Now here, guest OS, send keys, control or delete. So CTX admin, we need to log in here. And I logged in. So what is the password for CTX admin? It is That's correct, right? Yes. But password is showing incorrect. Okay. I think so. This storefront, uh, I think I connecting with the jump server. My bad. Uh, I connected Citrix storefront one. Now the storefront server is already created. Now you can see here. You can see this. The storefront is successfully loaded. Now, if we click this, no stores are available. OK, so what do you mean that no stores are available? So right now. No sites are created in this particular storefront. This is a newly configured server. This is newly configured server. Now we need to create a store. So store is nothing but just like a website, web page. So by using this store address that is called storefront URL, the URL will be connected by the user to access applications and desktop from the Citrix environment. There are three ways the user will be getting connected to the store. PN agent, browser, Citrix receiver. So which is the most popular method the users will get connected to store and accessing applications and desktop is browser method. Browser method. Now what about PN agent? In case in your environment, before Zen Desktop 7.0, if you are using like a Zen app 6.5, we can use a PN agent. So now PN agent is no more. So completely the version is end of life, no support from Citrix side. So now we need to learn browser and Citrix receiver method to connect the store and accessing an applications and desktop. So today 
we will discuss about Citrix applications we can connect through the store with the help of browser that we can see. So when we're creating the store, first it will ask the name. What is the store name? Example, based on your production or a testing or a development project, you can give different different names. Example, uh, I'm planning to create a, the application name is Rajesh Apps. This is a name I'm providing. So because of everybody, when you're creating your store, first you can use your name, then followed by apps. Then don't select these options and uh, you can click on next. And after clicking that, it will ask, uh, hey, where is your delivery controller to host the to host the website store? That means storefront store. So right now, the delivery controller already we have created lab 125 XDC 01. OK, this server address we need to provide here by clicking add. And click add and you can check this lab 125 hyphen xdc01 dot ctn.com we can click ok and you can select the communication is 80 so 80 is unsecured that's normally but when you are connecting securely we need to change the port number 443 but when you are using 443 we need to install a certificate so now Anything, anything you need to configure in this screen. In case if you have a secondary delivery controller, you can add again. If you have a single delivery controller, you can go ahead. Going forward, I will create a secondary delivery controller also. I will add here, but right now I'll go with a single delivery controller and advanced configuration I will set up later. Click OK. Next. And uh, one more thing here. If you're creating a single delivery controller configuration means only one site we have added like that we can add a multiple sites OK. To the store, so that means a single store can have able to handle more than one site configuration. So even Zenap 6.5 also you can include it here. That's called Zenap 6.5 is a form configuration just now. Uh, five minutes back, I explained about PNAs and right. In case if you are delivering applications and desktop from Zenap 6.5, then you need to use a, then you need to use a PNAs and configuration. So right now, PNAs and is not required. So one step back, click on next, and this is a remote access. It is connecting to Netscaler. So this will we'll discuss later. And authentication method, we have a different authentication methods are there. Now we are going to talk about a username and password method, which is the most of the people are using and remaining method I will explain in the next session. Click on next and uh, this is a Zenapp services URL. PN is in configuration. We don't require. It. OK, and please uncheck that and you can click create a store. Store creation, it will take some time, so please wait.
you can see here. The store is successfully created. If you want to test the site, you can click here. And you can check this. The site is. Connected so. And don't. Select this. And. Uh, now can. Click log on. And you can check this. The Citrix login page is working fine. So. And how to access the. How to access the storefront by using domain credentials to access applications and desktop that we will discuss later the store page is created successfully so what is the next job so guys you need to create a you need to create a store on your name and you need to check that whether this address is accessible or not you are able to see this login page this is your homework Understand? Yes, sir. So. Next step. Suppose if storefront is down. Suppose storefront is down. So what is the redundancy? So we need to create a second storefront server. We need to create a second storefront server. So I'm creating a second storefront server. Here now storefront roles are installing. Now the storefront roles are installing. This will take some time. OK, this will take some time after installing the storefront role. I will link storefront two to storefront one. So that we. We will do after installing of storefront services on storefront two server. So this will take more than 15 minutes. So what we are planning is so today we will complete installing the second storefront server. In the next session, we will configure the storefront 2 to with a one and we will create a, a group configured storefront services we will create. OK, that we will separately practice tomorrow. So this will take a 14 minutes of time, so don't waste your time. So now you can please connect the lab 125 STF 01 server. You can connect and create a store on your name. Example, uh, your name is Babu. So Babu apps like that you can create. If you want to practice more stores, example Babu apps 1, Babu apps 2, Bobby apps 3, like that you can create multiple stores also for practice purpose so that you never forget. Understand after that you have a, your user ID, right? You can log in with your ID. So when you're logging in, you need to provide the domain name for backslash and username is CTX admin and provide the password is whatever the password you have. So once you're logging in, once you're logging in, there is no apps because of we don't have any permissions. So once you set up the storefront carefully, then I will create a users and provide the permissions to the applications and desktop. So until tomorrow, our task is to complete the storefront services. Any other questions, Babu? No, sir. No, so please complete this oh, task yeah. by tomorrow without fail. So creating the okay, stores, at least minimum two two stores you can create on the lab 125 STF 01 server.
Thank you, and see you tomorrow. Okay, sir. Thank you.